Jan van der Waal is a uh, anatomist from the Netherlands, and this is work based on his PhD thesis from 1988. It's a it's seminal work, and it's never been cited in the literature because it existed in a thesis sitting in his library. And fortunately, in response to Peter Hyang, the sponsor of the O9 conference, he agreed to write it up. It's now published. Next slide, please. And the whole text article you can get online, the International Journal of Therapeutic Body Work and Massage. So what he's looking at here is the joint region of the elbow. He's looking at the architecture, the connective tissue, and leading to some comments on the anatomy of fashion. But you need to pay attention to the terminology. Are we talking about the locomotor system, the musculoskeletal system, or some of both? Ligaments, where are they? And finally, where is the fascia? From his perspective as an anatomist, you cut, you dissect, you separate capsules, ligaments, and muscles. But the continuity that was there in the original is gone. What you see in Netter does not exist. Netter's slides are made to show you a principle, but that principle isn't there. You had to create it with a scalpel to get it. So let's continue. So the dissection then changes the way in which you think about things. And the dissection is done by someone who has a particular vested interest in what he or she is going to show you. So the connective tissue forms two basic functions. And if you go back to the embryology, you can see that. It connects and it disconnects. So fascia does both. It allows tissue to slide and it holds tissues together. For those of you who've done any cross-country skiing, you get the right wax on there, you get kick when you want kick, and you get glide when you want glide. It does both. You get the wrong wax on there, and you're in trouble. Same thing with connective tissue. It's supposed to slide, and it wants to slide, and it's supposed to contract and, and stick together when it sticks together. We'll get to that in another time later. Next, please. So, again, this is what we see in Nether. You've cleared away all the fascia. Let me back up a little bit. If you think about the central nervous system, what comes to mind? What comes to mind is, you know, we've got a cell in the brain and it runs out of the spinal cord and out and so on. That's 10% of the cells. 90% of the cells in the central nervous system are glial cells. When I was in medical school, they had no function. Well, we now know they have a major function in memory. They do all sorts of things. What about fashion? We strip it, we get away with it. It has no function. Well, I suspect we're going to find major functions in fascia, just as we're finding major function in the blue cells. So, here the fascia has been stripped away to show you what doesn't exist, but at least, you know, it's a start. I mean, it, it gives you a framework to start to look at things, but this is not the way we really exist. Next, please. So, if you look here, he's showing the muscle going into the bone, you know, and then you've got some ligaments. Next to so what he did instead was a fascial sparing dissection, just, and just showing where gliding is possible and where gliding is not possible. Next please. And so again, depending on where it is in the tissue, you can either separate it out. Those of you who've taken the, the skin off a chicken drumstick, you just take your finger and go whoosh. I mean, that's a fascial layer. That's the degree to which the fascial layers are held together. Next, please. And then if you look here at the, uh, at the structure here, the elbow joint, the muscle is going into connective tissue, which is going into the bone. And here you have muscle spindles and the various nerve receptors. We'll, we'll talk a little more about this. Next, please. So what you have here, then, is rather than the tendon the ligament running next to the muscle, the muscle is in series with the ligament. Next, please. So, what you see here in the traditional anatomical concept is you have a ligament on one side of the joint. And if in this position, if the ligament is tight on the outside, it's going to be loose on the inside. And then if I change, the bones are going to change position relative to each other. So in only one position of this joint, are the ligaments going to be tight? And everywhere else, they're either going to be 
too much stretched or too slack. In other words, they don't work. A static ligament doesn't work. There's only two joints in the body where when you move the joint, the bones stay the same distance from each other. And that's the anterior cruciate ligaments in the knee and C1, C2 in the neck. Everywhere else, the distance changes. So everywhere else in the body, ligaments can't be a static length. They don't work that way. Next, please. So what he's saying is instead of this way, you get this way. You have the muscle going into the ligament, and the muscle then can tension the ligament. So instead of muscles and ligaments being running parallel, they're actually in series. And he coins the term dynamic, dynamic ligament for this complex. And you see this everywhere in the body once you start to look for it. If you take the scalpel, you can make this system look like this with a scalpel. But this isn't the way we're built. Next, please. So the connective and muscular tissue are organized in series, which means the ligaments then can be functional in every position of the joint. Next, please. So the usual category here is you're changing the concept of a static ligament to a dynamic, dynamic transmission of forces, which means that compressive forces and the tensile forces really are in relation to the tissues around them. Having changed our concept of the architecture, let's look a little more at the nerve receptors. That's starting to get a little more in the realm of the kinds of things that we're doing in terms of therapeutic interventions. So, traditionally the concept has been there are nerve receptors in joints and there are nerve receptors in muscles. And they're different. Well, hold on. All right, these are different. If you look at where you find these nerve receptors, <coughs> you find them, the transition between muscle tissue and the connective tissue. In other words, where the forces are being transmitted between different types of tissues are where you're going to find receptors. Next please. So it's, it's the transition of the muscle tissue to the septum, where the so-called proximal bulge of tendon organs are present. Now what does that mean therapeutically? The bulge of tendon organs are the pressure relief valve. You poke on them, the muscles give up. Clinically, if you're trying to release a muscle, find where the Golds are tendon organs are and put some pressure on there, and the rest of your job will become much easier. 